First, they may not appear to be worthy of attention. They bear no tasty fruit. They grow on that marshy no man's land, bordering sea or river, and to only about a meter and a half in height. Yet today, these diminutive plants are being increasingly recognized as the unsung heroes of the Earth's many biologically complex ecosystems. Mangroves, as these trees are called, are rich in biodiversity and are veritable cradles of a variety of plant, bird, animal and marine life. Situated as they are in the intertidal zone of marine coastal environments and estuarine margins, mangroves play a vital role in preventing soil erosion from floods. While the unique aerial root systems provide a highly protective belt against tidal waves and coastal storms. Mangroves are among the oldest of the Earth's trees, originating, it is believed, around 114 million years ago in the Indo-Malaysian area. The first recorded mention of this ancient genus dates back to reports of their sightings around the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf by Nearchus in 325 BC and Theophrastus in 305 BC. They appear again in that comprehensive 1668 treatise on the flora of the Western Ghats, the Hortus Malbaricus by Van Reed the then governor of the Dutch Malabar region. Today, mangroves dominate approximately 75% of the world's tropical coastline between 25 degrees north and 25 degrees south latitudes. Home to nearly 84 known species varieties, Mangroves provide a breeding ground for marine life, including fish species, shrimps, shellfish, and crabs. An estimated 80% of the global fish catch depends directly or indirectly on mangroves. Mangroves are an ideal nursery habitat for young fish. They provide cooler water with higher oxygen content during the early stages of their lives. As also plenty of food through the accumulation of bacteria and mangrove tree detritus. While their dense swampy thickets and aerial roots provide a safe haven from the predations of larger animals. The mud bank formation, it is a marine it is an operation of marine ecosystem. At the same time, mangroves plays a major role in uh, mud bank formation because all the materials of the mangrove is ecosystem. Uh, shedding of leaves and after decomposition, everything is deposited in the coastal water. Home to a rich variety of flora and fauna species, mangroves offer ideal nesting grounds for a wide variety of migratory birds. The abundant growth of cyanobacteria in these ecosystems increases the latter's nitrogen content. Mangroves also produce 
29 to 75 tons of biomass per hectare. This transforms nutrients on a continuous basis into sources of nitrogen, phosphorus and other beneficial plant nourishment. Northern part of Kerala, there is a lot of uh, you know mangrove resources available, and uh, many species are available of mangroves. Like uh, for example, the Abyssinia officinalis, the Abyssinia marina, and then we have uh, uh, Sonoracea alba, Rhizophora mucronata, then Brugera cylindrica, and then we have the smaller varieties uh, called Acanthus elicifolius. So these mangroves are able to store uh, carbon, a great quantity of carbon. And uh, not only in its uh, leaves and uh, you know stems and roots, but also in the sediment. So uh, this actually uh, you know uh, it uh, reduces the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which uh, which is a growing concern uh, globally uh, because of uh, the gl the global warming issue. And uh, because of this potential, uh, it is very essential to conserve the mangroves. A 2011 Gujarat Ecology Commission report states that mangroves through their high carbon sequestration rate of 45 kilograms per acre every day, act as an ideal natural foil against the ever-increasing threat of global warming. Resilient survivors, they are well adapted to their largely hostile coastal environments. For instance, while other plants may perish from the salt water present here, mangroves have not only evolved a unique seawater filtration system, but also one that allows them to extract fresh water from these deposits whenever required. The mangroves' unique aerial root systems absorb high wave energy, thus reducing their impact, especially during cyclones and tidal waves. A good case in point is the 2004 tsunami in the southern Indian state of Tamil Nadu. It was the presence of dense mangroves in coastal areas like Pichavaram and Mudupet that lessened the scale of tidal devastation in those regions. By serving as a natural barrier between land and sea, mangroves protect the earth from coastal erosion, shrinking shorelines, riverbank erosion, tidal bores, seawater seepage, and intrusion. Mangroves serve as natural sewage treatment plants with their inborn ability to metabolize organic waste. They also purify the water that we drink and the air that we breathe. They absorb impurities and harmful heavy metals from water. By sucking up pollutants from the atmosphere, these tiny coastal watchmen provide us with clean, breathable air. They also collect rainwater during the rainy season and release it gradually into the earth. The local communities in coastal Kerala utilize the nutrient-rich mud from the marshy mudflats of mangroves as fertilizer for a better coconut yield. Mangroves are rich in calcium content. This is helpful for milk production. Thus, mangrove leaves are used as cattle feed in rural areas, saving dairy cows from milk fever, a metabolic disease caused by low blood calcium levels. Like mammals and unlike flowering plants, mangroves are viviparous in nature. That is, they produce live young instead of dormant resting seeds like other plants. These propagules, as they are called, are dispersed through the water around the parent tree or shrub and soon take root elsewhere. Today, mangroves are disappearing three to five times faster than overall global floral forest species. They represent less than 1% of all tropical forests worldwide. Roughly 50% of the world's mangroves have been wiped out in the last half century. Once occupying about 700 square kilometers of coastal area 
in the southernmost Indian state of Kerala. Mangroves today cover a mere 17 square kilometers and have been declared a threatened species. Dumping of waste, including plastics and chemicals, is only one of the threats facing the mangrove ecosystem and the species living within it. Yet, all is not lost for nature's never-say-die champion. A growing awareness of the crucial role that these trees play in preserving and nurturing a region's ecology has led to efforts by conservationists, institutions and ordinary nature lovers to work towards the preservation of the world's mangrove wealth. The late Kalen Pokuran was one of the first persons in Kerala to recognize the importance of mangroves and to work towards their preservation. After his death in 2015, at the age of 78, his son, P. Raghunathan, has continued to uphold and carry forward his father's legacy. Raghunathan today collects, categorizes and nurtures the saplings of various mangrove species in his nursery for replanting later elsewhere during favorable seasons. The season is a season. 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 The season is a The Kettiwaku, <laughs> Then <laughs> Raghunathan is a firm believer in traditional methods of mangrove utilization by local communities in order to preserve the ecosystem. To offset the ecological damage caused by large-scale commercial fish, shrimp and crab farming methods in Kannur district, Raghunathan promotes traditional fish catching methods like manja, an indigenous way of trapping fish with the use of a box-like contraption, and tappal, where fish are caught by hand, much as our earliest forefathers used to do. The use of ring nets to trap crabs and fish is another time-honored and ecologically safe fishing practice that Raghunathan encourages in mangrove habitats. Likewise, he promotes the pokkali and kaipat method of farming in which rice cultivation and aquaculture go together. These are once popular integrated organic farming systems that have fallen into disuse today. This system of farming ensures sufficient nutrient recycling in an area. Ecotourism and community reserve projects are yet other ways to increase public awareness and responsibility 
in mangrove protection and propagation. Vellikil in Kerala's Kannur district is one such mangrove ecotourism destination. This reserve was developed without affecting the ecological balance of the mangrove forest. Today, the fresh, clean and invigorating air that visitors breathe here underscores, like nothing else, the importance of mangrove conservation for the future health of our planet and its inhabitants. The Kadalundi Vallikunna Community Reserve is another similar venture. It is the state's first community reserve project and is spread over 150 hectares on the banks of the Kadalundi River. Kotel Ayyappan is a watcher at this reserve. He is one among those who have dedicated their lives to mangrove restoration. Many of these trees have grown from the saplings that Ayyappan had collected from various places in Kerala and replanted here during the reserve's inception. Today, Kadalondi occupies a preeminent position among similar community reserves in the state. Ayyappan is ably aided in his mission by a three-member team. They are a busy foursome, guiding students, teachers and researchers who visit here, sharing their knowledge about mangroves regarding species variety, their peculiar properties, benefits, medicinal values and the need to conserve them today. Alongside, the team monitors activities within the reserve to ensure that there is no pollution or destruction of the habitat. Elsewhere in the district, at Sir Syed College at Taliparamba, young student P. V. Abdullah Muhammad is scripting his own story in mangrove conservation. Abdullah's interest in the subject took root under his teacher, P.V. Prabhakaran, at the Government Welfare Higher Secondary School at Chirakunna in Kannur district. Ever since, this young student has been busy planting saplings of different species of mangroves along the shores of rivers and water bodies in the region. Soon, he had gathered together a dedicated band of mangrove lovers, who, guided by their teachers, have converted four acres of nearby land into a rich mangrove forest at their school at Cherukunna. Now pursuing his degree at the Sir Syed College at Taliparamba, Abdullah still takes time off to visit the school's mangrove forest frequently and guide the students there in their efforts at mangrove conservation and propagation. The young man also organizes nature classes and mangrove awareness campaigns in his college. One such campaign is a poster design program that he has launched with the support of his teachers and the Campus Nature Club. Abdullah believes that creating awareness is crucial in reducing the conversion of mangrove forests 
for other land uses. For nearly 80% of Kerala's existing mangroves are situated on private lands. Abdullah is also involved in highlighting the long-term benefits of mangroves among local communities in such areas as the role of mangroves in groundwater recharging, protection from erosion and tidal damage, in chemical pollution absorption, oxygen production, pollution filtration and heavy metal removal. Such awareness campaigns, Abdullah feels, will go a long way in fostering a spirit of mangrove conservation and preservation. Not surprisingly, Abdullah's subject for his degree is biochemistry. Under the guidance of Professor Shrija, a well-known figure in mangrove research, Abdullah is researching the response of a mangrove associate, Acrosticum aureum, to salinity stress and the plant's physiological and biochemical response towards salinity. Also known as mangrove fern or golden leather fern, Acrosticum aureum is the only pteridophyte genus found in the mangrove ecosystem. Abdullah is studying the plant's ecophysiological activities, phytochemical characteristics, medicinal and antimicrobial properties for his research. My uh, research project is mainly about the across, uh, mangrove species Acrosicum aureum and I am, fo uh, I am focusing about the physiological and biochemical aspects of mangrove species and is across, especially Acrosicum aureum and related plants have a stress tolerant activity then mainly use the mainly I use the instrument GCMS for the anal analysis of the small or minute, com minute compounds were present in the in a plant then the most important property of the mangrove species is stress tolerant activity especially salinity tolerance is the main for mangrove species thanks to the efforts of activists like abdullah and other researchers and teachers the sir sayed college is fast emerging as a research center in mangroves sir sayed college have two research departments, Botany and Chemistry. These two research departments are exclusively promoting the mangrove-based research. Recently, we have got a program from central government that is Department of Science and funded by Department of Science and Technology FIST program, in which the program is exclusively for promoting the particular mangrove species research. And thereby, we are purchased two important instruments, gas chromatography and uh, FTIR. These gas chromatography instruments are purely used for the research of this particular species. In mangrove, there are some of the mangroves are medicinal, especially Avicennia and Rhizophora species have medicinal property. Some of the research scholars are working with these two these species to elaborate or to establish the medicinal value of this particular species. We have 43 research scholars, and most of the research scholars are still working with the physiological aspects or and anatomical, physiological and biochemical aspects of the medicinal plants. Just as the mangrove is the uncelebrated star in the firmament of a biodiverse environment, people like Ayyappan, P. Raghunath and Abdullah are themselves the unheralded champions in the field of mangrove conservation. Together, they are nature's hardy foot soldiers, fighting in the front ranks where land meets water and where the past meets the future. <laughs>